Hi, it's Heather Smith here. Today I'm going to run through some tips on how I actually use Receipt Bank in my business in order to help you either start using Receipt Bank or improve your efficiency using Receipt Bank in your practice or with your clients. Here is my Receipt Bank screen, which will look very similar to yours, except the colours may be different. I'm going to highlight the various ways you can get source documents, such as invoices or receipts, into Receipt Bank. At the top, I've clicked on Add Items to open up to this screen. Across the top, you can see there are numerous ways to actually add the documents. Upload, Email, Apps, By Post, PayPal, Mileage and Dropbox. I'm going to go through each one of these quickly with you so together we can understand if you and your clients are adding items efficiently and if there are other processes that could be utilised. The very first one here is Upload. Let me highlight how you can use this. If you have a page size paper copy of the documentation, what I suggest you do is use a scanner and program the scanner to send the documentation to your computer, to a Dropbox address or scan to an email address, noting that you can define your own unique receipt bank email address. If you're sending a scan from your printer to your computer and then from your computer to taking the document and putting it into Receipt Bank, then maybe you can save yourself 30 seconds by setting up a scan to email option so it has the uh, ability to go directly to your Receipt Bank email address. I'm a really big believer that a stitch in time saves nine. So if I come across something like that, it will hit my to-do list of something that needs to happen. So while I was actually preparing for this video, I realized that this was something I did not have set up. So I set it up uh, on my printer. So every printer will be different. And I had to, uh, when I set up mine, I had to look for extra apps and I clicked on an option that said scan to email. And then I carefully entered my unique receipt bank email address. The printer then told me it had sent a four digit pin to the email address. So I came here, I was wondering where this pin would go, but I'll show you where it went. If I click here on my inbox and this document here has come in, so note it's actually saying not ready, there's some issues with it. But if you actually click in on it uh, and look here, it actually says, Welcome to HP Scan to Email. Your printer username is um, and your PIN number. So this actually, this document was sent to my Receipt Bank inbox and that's where I found my PIN, which I used to activate the Scan to Email from the printer. So that's a really good um, little tip there that you could uh, help your clients with, getting that set up for them. Okay, I'm just popped back here into um, add items. I will go back and delete that, of course, because that's uh, not something that I need anymore. But if I did have the PDF sitting on my uh, desktop, so here I have a PDF sitting on my desktop, I simply come here and grab it and drag it in. And you can see there it's uploading into uh, Receipt Bank for me. So that's excellent. Very quick, very easy. I want to highlight something to you that sometimes um, I find confuses my clients, so I suspect other people perhaps have the same issue. Here I've received um, an invoice in, and if I um, grab the invoice, I can't just drag it and drop it in there. It doesn't work. What I need to do is capture it, drop it onto my desktop like that. See it drop down there? And that's when I can actually drop it back into a receipt bank, okay? It's possibly not gonna light that one because it's already been in there once. Um, see there, it popped up and said it, it's, again, highlighting that it's really good because it knows that uh, that PDF has actually already gone up there once. But I did wanna show you how if you do have an email like this and you're trying to drag and drop to receipt bank, that won't work drop it to your desktop, drop it up there. But I would much prefer you use the email option. So let's go and have a look at that. Let's click on the uh, email icon here. To use the email option, you set up a unique Receipt Bank email address. I've shaded out my address here. Otherwise, if you knew it, you could actually start emailing your documents into my business accounts, which would cause me rather a lot of havoc. Now, 
you can click uh, there on account settings to go and change uh, your email address or you can go up to account settings on the right there and click on my details so account settings and then click on my details there my details and there is an email option there is my detailed username and that's your email option there where you can go in and create your own unique email address for Receipt Bank. So you can just forward documentation into Receipt Bank. So if you have emails containing billing information, either in the body of the email or as an attachment, set up mailbox forwarding rules so they automatically push into Receipt Bank and then into your accounting solution. If you're receiving paper bills, contact the supplier and ask them if you can email the bills to you. Then you're both moving towards a paperless office and you're efficiently getting the supporting documentation into your business solutions. The third icon here is apps. Once you've signed up for Receipt Bank, I encourage you to install the Receipt Bank app to your mobile device. I use Receipt Bank on my iPhone, but I believe you can use it on most mobile devices Apples, Androids, uh, even the Apple Watch. So I use my iPhone for taking photos of small receipts. It's perfect for this situation. So this is me using the Receipt Bank app and I have uh, just a very simple receipt here. Take a photo of it. Hopefully you can see me taking a photo of it. Getting into focus, snapping a photograph and it's popped up there. Hopefully you can see that and, and and I simply submit for processing. So voila, it's my bib. <laughs> There's also the option to submit multiple images at one time. It's really important that the photo you take is a clear photo of the image. You don't want a situation that you, where you have skewed it, where you've just taken part of it, or there's a shadow across the photo, or the paper is crumpled. For any solution to work, even if you're sending it to someone who's going to manually enter it, they need to physically be able to read a copy of the bill or expense. So for me, I adopt scanning and uploading expenses as a part of my life. I keep receipts in my wallet and say I'm sitting at a cafe waiting for a friend. I'll pull them out, flatten them, take a photo, upload it. I may also write some extra details on it, such as job name or persons involved in the expense. The hot tip here, for me being in the industry of teaching and educating people about automation and productivity, it's pretty cool to be sitting in a cafe receipt banking. Um, I'll normally get someone asking me about it and it's an opportunity to talk about what I do. So if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper in practice and you're looking for additional clients, sit in a cafe, receipt bank and just wait for them to come and ask you what you're doing. The fourth option here is buy post. If you want to get scanning and post scan shredding of documentation done for you, or you have a backlog of documents that need scanning, this is another time saving option. You fill a bag with receipts and you send it in. This service does appear to have additional subscription charges, but for the time saved scanning and shredding, I think it's uh, cheap as chips. The fifth one along here is PayPal. This is a really good one, and I wonder how many people are actually using it. You link Receipt Bank to PayPal and it pulls the transactional information from PayPal and pushes these details into the accounting solution, which is excellent. So if you are using PayPal, connecting these two solutions is potentially going to save you a lot of time. I'm already connected, so you can't see, um, I can't go through the connection activation here. But if you are not connected, you click here on the PayPal icon and then you'll have a green button there with the option to enable the PayPal integration button. And it will take you through to an authorization screen. And once authorized, the magic should begin. Your PayPal payment details are brought from PayPal and imported into Receipt Bank. So remember that's when you're spending money via PayPal, it will be bought into Receipt Bank. So a really good one to set up. So. Um, I think uh, that one a lot of clients will benefit from. The sixth one along here is mileage. 
So if I click on mileage, um, this is only really useful for UK users and it hooks up with an app called TripCatcher. So I'm going to skip over it because I've not really uh, used that myself, but uh, if you are in the UK, maybe take a look at that and see how uh, you can use that. So the final one I've got here is Dropbox. Dropbox is an online storage folder. It sits as a folder on your computer. So once it's connected, you, what you can do is drag documentations into the Dropbox invoices folder and it then pushes them into Receipt Bank. So there you have it, a number of different options for getting documentation into Receipt Bank efficiently. Receipt Bank is an essential tool I've been using in my business for years. It's easy to use, minimizes data entry time, supports my paperless office, integrates with my cloud accounting solution and assists in cash flow management. You can find out more about Receipt Bank by visiting their website. If you have any questions about what I've been talking about, drop them in the comment section below and I'll come back and answer them. As always, please like the video, please share the video with someone who may benefit from the video and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch.